For a dog trainer, an e-collar is just another tool that we can use in our program. It's going to take the place of the leash and we will start to substitute using the e-collar in the leash's place. This cannot be used to teach while we're working with the dog. They need to be taught prior to applying the e-collar. Once they've learned their skills and they're comfortably doing their skills, then we can use this in place of the leash. When you first take your collars out of the box and your transmitter out of the box, you want to charge them. Put them on the charger for two hours. They'll go to a full charge in that length of time. Be ready to use. You'll know that when they need to be recharged, the light on your receiver will be blinking red and the light on your transmitter when you press the button will be red instead of green. If you've got a green light here and a green light here, you've got plenty of battery life. If you've got a red light when that's blinking and you've got a red light here, that means you can train a little bit longer, but you're going to need to get this thing on a charger pretty quickly. Okay, to turn the unit on, we're going to turn the receiver on. It has a on-off button on top of the receiver. You're going to press that button and the green light will start to blink saying that it is on. The transmitter does not have an on off button. It is on demand. When you press a button, any of the three buttons that are on it, it's on, but when you release the button, it's off. So therefore you don't have to turn this on and off. As soon as you turn this on, you want to send it a signal from the transmitter just to make sure that they're synced up. I'm pressing the continuous button right now and you see a continuous red light here. That means that they are paired and they're ready to go. As you start to introduce your dog to the e-collar, one of the first things you want to do is put it on the dog. And tension and tightness here is very important. Um, there's multiple ways to do this. My rule of thumb is I pull it to a specific hole on the collar strap where it's very tight and I back out one hole. That allows you to get a finger underneath it, that you can get a finger under the collar, then you know it's not too tight, it's not strangling him. Once that is done, then it's time to do something fun. So immediately after you put your e-collar on your dog, it's time now to throw a tennis ball or throw a bumper and make him start to believe that when this goes on, we get to do something fun. So he looks forward to you putting an e-collar on. It is his uniform to get to go play in the game. So how do we get a dog to understand that this is nothing more than a leash? In our training, as we start to teach this dog, we're going to be applying leash pressure with our leash on his neck. That's where it's going to, the leash will contact him. As we use the e-collar, it's going to be contacting the dog at the exact same spot, same location. So now each time that we give a tug on the leash, we're going to give a light bump with a transmitter to send the signal to the e-collar to give the dog the stimulation. It's just a light tap. Each time that we use a tug on the leash, we're gonna tap him with the collar. And before too long, in his mind, these two are the, the leash and the e-collar are the exact same thing. There is no difference between them. Now with that, you need to be careful. Probably the first two weeks, we're gonna have a min-max rule. No more than five stimulations per session so that you can avoid overstimulating the dog and having him start to worry about this but get at least three stimulations in so that he can start to learn the lesson we're trying to teach him is that this and our leash are the exact same thing. As you start to stimulate your dog, you're going to use low levels of stimulation. And what we're looking for is a reaction from the dog. It could be to him to stop and turn his head and look at you. What I typically look for is a little bit of head drop and a swallow response out of the dog. If you look closely, most of the time when you see that, they're saying, I understand, I accept. I, I've got, I know I've done something incorrect here. Once we see that response, then we're gonna to start to think about that level on our intensity and stay in that level. Anytime that you see your dog vocalizing, you're out of bounds and you need to turn that wheel down. Rule of thumb here though, is to always use the minimum amount of pressure necessary to get the dog to respond and to stop what his instincts are trying to tell him to do. Used properly, this is much easier on the dog than a regular leash is because it's less contact, it's less intensity, but they've just been conditioned through training to understand they have to stop when they feel this. It's the word no to them. It tells them to stop their actions. So you're shopping for an e-collar, probably because you told your dog no, 
but they just kept doing whatever it was anyways. Maybe you just want your dog to be able to run around off leash, but you know they won't come back if you call them. Or maybe you want a tool that will take your training to the next level. My name is Cheryl Ross, and I'm a professional dog trainer who not only uses e-collar technologies myself, but I train hundreds of my clients to use them as well. Yes, I clearly give this tool and this company a high endorsement, but let me tell you why. It has a level locking feature, which I love because it ensures that even if I accidentally bump the dial, the working level will stay the same. This gives me peace of mind knowing that I'll be communicating at the proper level with my dog. The Mini Educator has a hundred different levels of stimulation, which allows for a wide variety of communication. The remote design allows it to fit comfortably in your hand, and the buttons are easy to reach and features a momentary and continuous stimulation. It also has an LED flashlight feature, which allows you to make your dog visible at night. I love this feature and I use it all the time. You might be thinking about buying a cheaper electronic collar that's out there on the market, but those collars more than likely will only have seven to about 15 levels. That means level one, is probably already pretty high. Level two is really strong. Level three is very intense and it just gets a bit ridiculous from there. With eCollar Technologies Mini Educator, a level 20 is similar to a level one on those cheaper models. That means that you have 20 levels lower than what you would get with the other collar. This opens up a whole new kind of communication. Rather than yelling at your dog the whole time, this collar allows you to speak at room volume or even a whisper if you need to. When your dog understands that the stimulation is just a continual conversation and not a feeling that is meant to say no in a really loud way, your dog will not only listen to you, but love and respect you as well. So you might be thinking about going for one of those cheaper options on the market. But let me just tell you this, that old saying is true, you get what you pay for, and this is worth every penny. So, that outdoor activity that you've been wanting to do with your dog is now possible with e-collar technologies. Your dog holds a big place in your heart, but don't let the jumping up, digging, or other non-desired behaviors affect your relationship with them. Hi, I'm Lauren with PetSafe, and I'm here to tell you how you can help improve any unwanted behaviors with the PetSafe Yard and Park Dog Trainer. Use this trainer to reinforce good behavior and discourage bad habits. The trainer works by delivering a static stimulation through your dog's collar from the press of a button on the handheld remote. The trainer includes eight adjustable levels of static correction and a tone-only option that alerts your pet with a beep. The system is waterproof, rechargeable, and you can enjoy up to 400 yards of leash-free training. Do you need to train more than one pet? The PetSafe Yard and Park Dog Trainer can train up to three dogs with additional added dog collars. Make your dog the best he can be while giving yourself a full range of training tools with the PetSafe Yard and Park Dog Trainer. Thanks for purchasing your new dog training system, Pet 998DBB. We're now going to show you uh, what you received inside the box when you first get your package. Uh, this is the remote transmitter. Your two collar receivers. Uh, nylon straps, uh, one orange, one black, just to let you know the difference between uh, channel one and channel two. Uh, test light, to test a uh, static shock, two sets of contact points, one for each receiver. Um, and then this is your AC wall adapter, uh, and this is your um, USB connector that goes in the bottom. And this can actually go into this splitter, which then lets you charge uh, both your receiver and your transmitter at the same time. And then lastly is your product name. When using a training collar, always remember to use it for training and not to leave it constantly on the dog. Uh, as these contact points on the receiver can cause injuries uh, like bed sores or we refer to it as pressure narcosis. So always remember to uh, not use the training collar continuously with the normal dog collar but just for training. Uh, now I will quickly show you how to pair your collar receiver to your transmitter and then show you uh, the basic functions of this unit. Uh, with this new uh, 998DBB, uh, we've changed a couple things. Uh, these are more readable and it's made out of silicone instead of plastic. Um, so I'll now show you how to pair the receiver to the uh, collar.
So you start with by putting it on channel one. Uh, I usually just switch to vibration mode, but it doesn't matter. And then press and hold uh, the power button. You'll see a solid green light. And then when that begins to flash and beep like it did there, you just press the Y button on your remote and it'll beep again. It should now be paired, which it is. Uh, now to pair the second one, all you do is switch to, uh, press the 1, 2 button and switch to channel 2. Do the exact same thing, turn it on, and then press and hold the power button for 5 seconds. It beeps, and then you press the Y button on your remote. And that's paired to channel 2, and this is paired to channel 2. Uh, now I'll show you uh, the functions. Uh, there are, there's a few functions. Uh, there's uh, first I'll show you the beep function, and then that's for the other receiver. Uh, the vibration for receiver two. You just press the mode button, go to this uh, symbol here, and then obviously here again. Now the static shock. It, it's uh, currently at zero, so you want to move it off of zero by press using the dial on the side. Uh, just for an example, we'll put it to 10. As you can see when you press the Y button, uh, the orange light flashes. Same with channel 2. This time it's on 100, so it'll be probably brighter, and more solid. Uh, the last function, uh, there is a light. Uh, basically by pressing this, it will make the light uh, blink on the receiver, as you can see there. With receiver number 2, receiver number 1. And then there's also a light function on the top. Uh, for this LED light on top of the transmitter, if you were looking for your dog or lost your keys or something like that. And that's all the functions of the system. Okay, I'm now going to show you uh, the waterproof capabilities of our receivers uh, by placing the receiver in the water and then uh, using it. Uh, we'll put it to the vibration mode, as you can see it's vibrating before. Put it in the water, and it's still vibrating while in the water. Uh, and now I'll show you by taking it out that the static, fun static shock function still works, even after being in water. As you can see, the light is still going orange, indicating that static shock is working. 